That's right, folks. It's time for Michael Callier's Comedy Corner. Come on, somebody. Some of the funniest comedians on the planet has been on this show. Over 400 comics have done their dance right here at the Comedy Corner. But you better be funny. I tell you right now, if you ain't funny, woo, it's going to be a long walk back to your car. We're going to talk about you. Ooh, we're going to say some terrible stuff. You're going to hate us. So you better be good because it's the Michael Callier Comedy Corner. <laughs> Y'all know this is my favorite part of the show. I had to go get my coffee. This is my favorite part of the show because we don't never know what's going to happen. This is like a, a potluck. You know, when we first started, uh, Mike, and welcome to the show, we've already played over 500 comedians. But when we first started, it was like, pow, pow, every comic was funny. Lately, some of them have fallen off. And boy, we come up here if it don't work out. So the last week or two, oh, man, we've been killing them dead. So it's always a treat for me because I don't know where it's going to go. But you start on even ground. We got you here. Where you here from, Mike? What city? I'm from L.A. Well, I'm not. I'm from Pittsburgh, but I live in L.A. right now. All right. Then coming to you. All the way from L.A., from Pittsburgh. Pasilas, what'd you say? Go Steelers. Oh, oh yeah. Steelers. I didn't know what he said. Man, he ain't going to tell him what he's going to say. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, get our hands together for the wonderful Mike Murphy. Woo! I don't have my bell. All right. Hey, I'll, look, thank you for having me. But before I even get started, when your friend reached out to me, he was like, yeah, there's a comedian in L.A. I don't know if you know him. His, his name is Michael Collier. I'm like, bro, you sounded like he was doing open mics or something. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, of course I know him. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to plug you over. I'm like, what you mean, do I know him? I'm like, yo, <laughs> I, well, this is a dude under a rock. He was like, nah, nah, he's a good, he's a good dude. I'm like, man. And then when I talked to you, you said, hey, you better be funny because we like to – you know, we like to grind them up. I seen you at the improv, and the dude went on stage, and he didn't do any material. And you went up there, and you let everybody know how you felt about it. I said, nah, this ain't going to be me. <laughs> this ain't going to be me. I said, all right, that's bad. You already off to a good start. Go on, get it. No, on. hey, so look, so look, you guys can see my beard is absolutely amazing, right? But this hairline, it's nastier than a Porter John after Coachella, right? So <laughs> I, I miss having hair because when I had hair, I could pass for a bunch of different races, Puerto Rican, Armenian, whatever DJ Khaled is, uh, those people in the <laughs> mid, um, uh, Middle Eastern um, countries, uh, terrorists, me and them. I, I could pass for all that, right? You know what I'm saying? Now, with the ball head, it's either like January 6th or like, can can he say the N-word? I'm not sure. It, yeah. it's, it's just tricky. So I get to L.A., I find out that, I don't look black enough to black people. This was breaking news to me. Where I'm from, it's either you black, white, or you mix, but then you're still black. I, so this was crazy to me. And I remember the day that I lost my hair like it was yesterday. It was a Friday. I'm going to the gym. Now, I'm in there. I'm like, I'm trying to work on my chest, build my body up, build up my confidence. I'm about to do my set. My boy says, hold on. I ain't about to tell you what to do. Now, listen, anytime somebody says they ain't about to tell you what to do, they about to tell you what to do. He yeah. said, I'm looking at the top of your head, and it looked like mine's when I went bald. I immediately got defensive. Hey, bro, you hating. You just mad because you ain't got it. I know my head, it'll grow back. I start treating it like your car. You, somebody be driving with you, say, yo, your gas light on. You're like, bro, we'll make it. I know my car. That's how I was doing, <laughs> doing my hair. I'm like, I'm going to just get a line up. It's, the top going to grow back. Chill. He's like, I, I, ain't, I ain't telling you what to do. But then he proceeds to start giving me razor recommendations. Hey, bro. I said, I'm, I'm going to grow it back. <laughs> so, so I leave the gym, right? I, I'm not in the, the best mood. I go to my mom's house to get a free meal because at the time I was like fr uh, financially frustrated, right? Right. So I'm sitting down eating. Now, you know, mom, she's standing over me. She's like rubbing my shoulder, talking to me. She said, uh-uh, you sure is your dad's son? I said, well, what? She was like, you getting kind of thin up top. I almost called her the B word, you know what I mean? Because she's not black. So I was, I almost said it, but I, but I didn't. I, I, got, I, got, I reeled it in. I said, nah, you don't know my hair, ma. I'm going to grow it back. You hate it. She was like, all right, baby, I ain't here to argue with you. I storm off, go to the barbershop, thinking I'm going to get this lineup to prove these haters wrong. And I get met with the same energy from the barber. Uh -uh. I sit down in the chair. He like, hey, what are we doing with this? What, man? What you talking about, bro? I just need a lineup. In the middle of me explaining that I just need this lineup, I hear what sounds like a camera flash. I turn around. Hey, fam, you took a picture of my head? He showed me the picture like this. Now, this is an angle I'm unfamiliar with, this aerial view. 
<laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, it didn't. I didn't like. I didn't like what I saw. It looked like the internet service map for Metro PCS. It was not really a lot of coverage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it it looked like a thumbprint, like <laughs> at a police lineup. It it was bad. It looked like somebody drew a full head of hair on the etching sketch and then shook the etching sketch. I said, hey, if, I said if you can't if you can't save it, you gotta shave it. <laughs> so he cut it off and, and that was that man that, that that's my hair journey <laughs> that's what i'm talking about Come comedy that was brilliant thank you appreciate that man you came in with the woolly willy <laughs> you, you remember the woolly willy mike i do yeah, that, that, that was a playstation in your day mike <laughs> hey I, I, hey, Cletus, I didn't even know you was that old to be referring to PlayStation. Like, I was, I came out in 10. All right, see, this is what happens, Mike. They always go too far. They <laughs> always go too <laughs> you, oh, you can't call me old, man. I got the button. I ain't even I, that old, Mike. I, I thought you was like a Tory. You you brought up, I thought that was a, a cartoon or something you was talking about just now. The Willy Willy? You ain't never yeah. heard of the Willy Willy? No, I never heard of that. So the Willy Willy was the etch -a sketch but it was just a dude's face, and you could draw hair, a beard, all of that on there, man. So it was like the clearly, the, clearly, your light skin privilege gave you real toys when you were growing up. No, I you had, was poor. You probably had a GI Joe. I had Army Men. It's a difference. It's a difference, Mike. No, we had the little green ones with the with the fingers on the, on the skateboard on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what we had. I wasn't look. I grew up. It was bad. I could I said I ain't going back to that. I gotta make a way out of this. This is crazy. Are <laughs> well, you making it, brother? You said Porter John, right? Yeah, Porter John. After Coachella. <laughs> I would say Porter Potty. Oh, yeah. That's the same thing, but sometimes it's you... the same thing, but Porter Potty is what most people will hear. And I think it's funnier than Porter oh. Porter John. It's okay. No, just, no. I heard it. I was like, oh, you mean the Porter Potty. Yeah. Oh, know? Okay. That's See, I wasn't it. sure. Some people say different things, so all right, cool. And your mama, your mama ain't black? No, she's Italian. Oh, okay. All right. And um, uh, do you do any pieces in your show about your mom, your relationship with your mom? Yeah, I do. Um, when I first started comedy, see, I kind of changed it, Mike. When I first started, Mike, my con it wasn't dark, but it was like I would say the most left field stuff, true stuff, but it was like crazy. And then I started re relying on it just being like shock value than actually writing the joke to make the joke good. So mm -hmm. I kind of stepped away from that and try to like write the jokes better. So it was funny no matter what. But yeah, I, I do a lot of stuff about my family, about myself. Um, and, and that's that's where all my stuff come from. True stuff, true stories. But that's really a true story. What I just said, like I just punched it up to make it funnier. But yeah, that's how it happened. I lost my hair and I was like, the mm -hmm. two, three people in one day said something. I gotta, it gotta go. But yeah, oh. I talk, I talk about my mom all the time. Oh, good. I'm glad about that. You know, no, I think we a lot don't talk about your mama. See, hey, look, see, I, hey, Mike, one time I was at the improv back in Pittsburgh and I was, it was like a mic, but they're like real shows because it's not like LA, they, everybody come out. And I told this joke and I'm like, about my mom, everybody's laughing. I'm like, she's right there in the crowd. She's like, Michael. She's like, because <laughs> <laughs> it was like embarrassing and they don't know if she's there. It's the best thing you can do is if you can do your comedy wrapped around your truth. Yeah. If because everybody can relate to real stuff. And if it happened, yep. it happened to most of us. We just did the shows in Philly. And the poor guy on the show with me, he started out as the feature. And the girl was the was the host MC. She was so brilliant. Y'all flipped he, it. But uh, his stuff just sort of sat there. You know, so I had flipped him up. So yeah. that, he was the opener and she was the feature, but I kept waiting for him to do something that, that tells me why the club hired him. As a feature, he never got to it. And then he mentioned just off the side that his, that his wife, he just got married, and that his wife is white. He just, that was just on the side, and he kept moving. And I said, bruh, <laughs> some material about having a white wife. It's a, it's a two hour routine. If you just yeah. talk differences and things you go through you're not even mentioning that and you don't understand how come your show ain't popping go to the real when you do the real whoo ain't nothing i, for you, I think bro. as comedians sometimes we 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 don't realize that the funniest stuff is the stuff that we don't even that we sitting in and we don't know 
Like I told, I did an open mic a couple of weeks ago and I was talking to, uh, I don't know if you know Ron G. I was talking to him and mm -hmm. I'm telling him the story. Everyone's in there in tears. It's way funnier than what I just did on the stage. And they're like, yo, you, you tell that on stage? I'm like, nah, it was just a story. He was like, what? So I started working on it. I did that in Phoenix for the show where I met your boy. Kill. I was like, oh, it's it's in there now. So now I start going to the the stuff that I think, oh, this is got to, someone got to hear this. And I yeah. start punching it up. No, Ron G ain't no joke, dude. That's Ron G technician when it comes to this comedy thing. So he be listening real close. And if he gave you that advice, you need to roll with that. What you got to say there, uh, Cleek? I would. I just wanted to talk about your experience in Philadelphia, man, and just say because, like, one of the things that I do, um, that man, I talk about my wife all the time, and I think think the fact that she's invisible really <laughs> makes a lot of sense to the people. You know what I'm saying? If she actually existed, it'd be a lot funnier. But because <laughs> you know she's a figment of my imagination, a lot of people really can connect with her not actually being alive. Michael, we fell for that. See this guy. He's a baiter. You know what a baiter is? You put the I'm a master baiter. I ain't gonna lie to you. I what? wait, that oh, came out wrong. That you came out wrong. I said what? I'm a master baiter, but yeah. that came out wrong. That baiter on he does a fantastic job. This is funny, but you're funny for real. And we love you, Mike. That was hey. excellent. Tell people how they can find you. Um on uh, my my website is uh comedianmikemurphy.com, mm -hmm. YouTube, same thing, uh Instagram, Facebook, all everything comedian uh Mike Murphy. At all social media. Give us a W and leave us with a woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo, woo. My man, Mike Murphy. Hey, thanks for real. having me. Buddy. You are excellent. Thank, Thank you, brother. You, brother. Thank you, you so much. Up, although we enjoy that type of thing. Hey, brother, have a good 